Hello, hello, hello. This is attorney Mike Gravin coming to you from Chicago as usual. And we've got a fun one today. I ran across a couple of good clips from Cedric Simpson. Uh, and it's, it's very exciting. Maybe I should get the fez out for this. I'm not sure. Um, but it's going to be uh, Judge Simpson's third video. And uh, that qualifies him for a playlist. His life is going to change now. <laughs> I'm sure he's very excited. You know, these judges haven't made it until they have a playlist on Law Talk with Mike. They won't admit it, but they know it's true. Uh, and with and with the playlist comes an automatic invitation to come on Law Talk with Mike. So Judge Simpson, come on, I won't bite. Or Lanice Bryant, or Judge Middleton, or Judge Gothier, or who else? I've got more. I can't. I can't. Judge Olsaver. They they can all come on here. Um, I'm, I just wanted to get one in today. I didn't mean to. I was going to try to do a video, but I ended up on uh, on uh, Team Skeptics uh, 50,000 celebration yesterday. We had a lot of fun. Who was there? Schrodinger was there. Uh, Plot Hole, Brainy Beaver. It, it was a wreck. I, I'll, there's a link to that in my community tab or whatever. It, 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 was, it was good times. All right, let's get this thing started. Court does call the case of the cases of the people, state of Michigan versus Donovan Law the second. We're ready in this matter, Your Honor. Lauren Brown, Deputy Chief Public Defender, appearing with and on behalf of Mr. Donovan Law. Rob Don, on behalf of the people. Right. And this is date and time set for a preliminary examination. What are we doing today, Joe? Your Honor, um, as you're aware from the last um, preliminary exam or PCC day. We tried to get everybody here, and I would have almost been successful undue to the fact that I have at least three to four officers out sick. I think I think uh, you're right. Could not appear on Zoom, so we're asking for a quick adjournment. <sighs> All right. Any response from the defense? Honor, in this matter, um, I believe that the court will recall that I had asked for a, a quick date. The court had indicated that. Um, as the previous APA um, had said that there were a lot of witnesses that uh, the court would be willing to grant an adjournment. I would ask for no adjournment that we go forward, but I do understand the court's uh, position on this. So right. um, I'll leave And I, I did attempt to try to give a quick date. I don't also, the court has to be mindful that they, we're in the uh, middle of a pandemic and so they're certain unavailabilities that will occur in that regard. But um, I will adjourn this preliminary examination. My next date is the 25th of January. January 25th, 2022, 9 a.m. or as your Zoom bite indicates. All right, this is a quick one. I just wanted to uh, to show this. It's, it's only a few minutes. You, you'll see it all sort of blow up here. But basically, they get a continuance. And of course, that's going to happen. You, you're set for, for a hearing. They need a bunch of witnesses between Christmas and New Year's during a pandemic. It ain't happening. That, that's that's just the way it is. But um, but I, I, that's why one of the things I like about uh, Judge Simpson. Uh, one, he's the only one who's providing material. I did a Christmas one for him. Uh, through the holidays, he's just soldiering on. I mean, I'm sure he takes his vacations, but he, he's there just clearing his docket. And that's with you, Your Honor, right? Yes, it is before me. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Law, so January 25th, we'll try it again. So what happened if they don't show up on the 25th? Then what? We're just going to keep adjourning this or what? Because I'm, yeah. I'm not getting any federal time. Like, I'm on dead time. The longer I sit here... Mr. Law? Mr. Law, I'll ask that the matter um, either I ask that the matter be dismissed. It'll be up to the court to decide whether or not they want to do that. But I will ask if, if they're not ready to proceed. I'll ask that they dismiss it. That guy's yeah. smooth. I guess hey, well, you're welcome. Yeah, once again, another happy customer. Thank you, Sergeant. <laughs> you're very welcome, sir. Thank you, Deputy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Have a good new year, Your Honor. I'll see you next year. <laughs> yes, sir. Take care. Court recalls the case of the people versus 
Chance Adkins. Okay, so that that was just a little preamble. This is the main event. Uh, the, the first one just kind of cracked me up, and you see what what he's dealing with there. <laughs> I mean, he's going to have to grant that continuance, but the defendant's not happy about it. This one is wild. Uh, <clears throat> I, I saw this hearing. I I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, the, you, you'll see. I, I don't want to just. I, I can you hear it? That that's that's the only thing because you really have to hear what's going on. They they they, they attempt to. Uh, they attempt to put one over on the judge here, and it, it does not go well. Counsel, state your appearances, please. Tara Brenner, Assistant Attorney General for the People. Thank you for your patience. Brown. All right, Mr. Brown, have you Ron, had Ron an appearing on behalf of Ms. Atkins? All right, have you Ron. had an opportunity to talk with your client regarding the text message? Yes, in the breakout room, I read them to him. And again, I will indicate that when the court initially set the bond in this matter, um, I was not I was not in possession. So is there anything he wants to say regarding this? Because I'm, I'm certainly reconsidering his bond in light of this. And, and Mr. Brown, I will direct your attention. Um, I mean, I don't even get out the first page of this, but the language he uses regarding her, okay, that's his business. But then, since this is indeed an, a matter regarding child support, he's quitting his job and you won't get anything. Wow, I see he says won't get shed. All right, and just in case anybody's having trouble hearing, what's going on here is the judge was was trying was going to reduce his bond, but he got in possession of some texts that were bad. This is just an incredibly horrible idea. I always deal th with this with my clients. Most get it, but I'm like, you know, if we have a case pending, don't put anything on social media, don't text, don't email anything that you'd be embarrassed of because it's discoverable. And in, in in my in the civil context, they, they can ask for it in discovery, um, but. But in this case, it's criminal context, and he he sends some inappropriate texts, and uh, the prosecutor gets a hold of him. When I work at Taco Bell, see how you like fifty a week instead. Um, and then again, he was basically talking about. Uh, it, I'm presuming the child not getting anything. He goes through that. But then the other part that concerns me, well, there's another part that concerns me where he talks about that he had made over a hundred grand last year and spent all the money. Again, this being an issue of not a failure to pay child support. And then he also then makes a statement, which is really, quite frankly, one of the most alarming when one is setting bond and had i known at the time we wouldn't even be having a discussion regarding the changing of his bond um he just says at the end because now you get no child support because i'm leaving first of all thank you old dog that i i really appreciate it but if, if you miss this, he sends he sends a text, and this is this is a, you know it goes to bond. He's he's supposed to pay child support, but in this text he says I'm leaving, so that makes him a flight risk. It's it's the dumbest thing possible to put into a, a savable format for a judge to see. I, I mean that's like the the prime thing they're worried about. Are you going to return to court? I, that that's the purpose of bond, and and then you you threaten to uh, to disappear in text that the judge can see it's it's horrible and the attorney is odd in his his approach you'll see it gets a little testy here it probably wasn't his best day but um i i i i wouldn't have taken the the approach he did with his client but yeah you know tell me what you think in the comments so those are the points that cause this court grave concerns regarding this defendant's release. Your Honor, he, I shared them with him. He denies making these messages to her. Agreed. He, he simply denies it. 
I tried to check the uh, booking information at the jail. So, I mean, you, you see that they, they kick it off with he denies he sent the text. That's a bold position. That is a bold position. This can be independently verified. So I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know if he sent the text or not, but I highly suspect he did. Uh, any of them, the timeline for any of them. And I looked through the file. I noticed that there were six payments made in, made in 2020, September 24th, 2020 for $198. July 17th, $198. July 9th. Three ninety nine seventy eight, June eighteenth, three ninety nine seventy eight, June third, three ninety nine seventy eight, five twenty, twenty, three ninety nine seventy eight. All, but at some point he was working and then he wasn't, and they took his money. So what I'm getting at is he denies threatening her. Uh, some of this is commentary on on the deterioration of their relationship as a, a couple and you know, it's, there's bitterness obviously this right here is a horrible argument it's the least of their problems because it's verifiably false but the attorney wants to take the du the, the dual position of of he didn't send the texts but um the texts are an accurate uh depiction of the deterioration of the relationship so give him a break so he he want he's effectively arguing in the alternative. Both arguments are horrible. <laughs> I mean, I get it. His client didn't leave him a good spot, but this is not, in my mind, the way to approach it. Involved, but he's denying that he he made these messages. And he has no intent to leave. He, as I told you this morning, he has two jobs lined up. Thank you, Captain. And Captain. he's got to come up with seventeen hundred dollars uh, by by the timeline you gave him, and then pay five hundred week so so mr mr brown my problem is i have an individual who apparently is very angry that somebody is demanding on behalf of the children of their relationship hey he has obviously not made payment for some it says here i'm leaving um and your honor, if I may, the, yes. the child support statute's very clear that the bond should be set at 25% cash only of the arrearage. Um, I understand that this morning the court found good cause to deviate from that, but now looking at these messages and taking everything into account, the payments that Mr. Brown was just stating were from unemployment, which the state gave liberally to everybody during the pandemic. So that's why we got some payments in 2020, not because he was working or making payments, he probably was working under the table because he admitted he made a hundred thousand dollars. Where did that come from? Working under the table? You got proof of that? Yeah. Well, he's, he's admitting he that he made hundred thousand, and I don't think that's what his tax. I haven't seen his tax. Yeah, they got proof of it. He texted it, and the judge has it in his possession. That that that's what they've got, and and you're going to take the position that they didn't make the text when they can go to the cell company or whatever and verify it. They got it from the from the wife. She has the text, and it makes sense in context. I guarantee. Oh, I, I, I just don't know what this attorney's thinking. Turns though. Nope, I haven't either. But he was collecting unemployment when he claims he made a hundred thousand dollars. So here, just he as you stated, under the table. You got Mr. Brown. You got Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, I didn't Mr. interrupt Brown. you, sir. I didn't I, interrupt you. I didn't hear you. I did not interrupt you when you were speaking. So, Your Honor, the the victim does indicate a history of family violence, which you know we can we can take for what it's worth. But looking at the way he does speak to her, the fact that he says he's leaving, the fact that he hasn't been making payments, and the fact that the statute specifically states it should be set at twenty five percent cash only, I'd ask that you place the bond pursuant to the statute at twenty five percent. He owes just over eighteen thousand dollars at this point, so it should be forty five hundred dollars cash only. Well, hold it. The amount's gone up from the complaint. It's obviously. gone up because he's continued to not pay. He has a oh, monthly yeah. obligation of $662 a month. So as of today, it's $18,219.36. $18,219.36. Correct. Your Honor. So, well, hold on a moment. So this complaint... 
Did you see the text, Your Honor, where he says he has $2,000 and a job lined up and she better, you know, help him get this worked out? I did. Okay. All right. I didn't, how, I didn't send a text. I wasn't, I wasn't able to. I was in, Your Honor. I did not send these text messages. If I'm given a chance, I will do exactly what I said. I want to make things right. I do not. I can't do anything from in here, and I want to make things right. I love my children. And well, I will do here, exactly here's what the problem. You, what I here's promised the problem. You, Pardon? I will do exactly what I agreed to when I promised, sir. I did not send those text messages. I can download. I can download the PDF file of T-Mobile, and I can make it look like any number or any text message. Another horrible argument. Uh, not only that, but I'm I, I have such a criminal uh, bent to my mind that I can tell you how to uh, to create fraudulent documents regarding texts. Uh, not impressive to a judge. Uh, <laughs> judge Simpson is not having any of it. And we're talking about a message from a year ago, sir. If now, just, what you want to do, if you want to, if, if you want to have a hearing on it, I'll have a hearing on. It. No, I just I'm asking for the explanation. But I think the prosecutor is right. I deviated from that, gave you a way to work, and was hoping that what would happen is that the. 43 that we had before, not the 45, but the 43. Sir, I think just, give me a like, just give me a chance. You just want to wanna interrupt me? If you want to interrupt me, I'm going to let you go because then I'm going to have my say. No, go ahead, please. I want you to say everything you got to say. Go ahead. You keep interrupting me. Say what you have to say, and then I will say what I have to say. I'm sorry, Your Honor. No, sir. Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Oh, wait. You decide if you want to say something, say something. This is not good. I promise I'll do what you, what you asked me earlier. That's all I wanted to say, sir. Just give me a chance and I will pay this money back on the timeline we agreed. That's all I want to say, sir. I promise you. Madam AG, you, it, it, those payments that were made in 2021, those were taken right out of his support because that was done before he would even get hands on it. It's, those weren't voluntary payments. Is that That's correct, Your Honor. They were taken from his unemployment they were garnished from his unemployment. Okay, so he, the payments he did make are taken out and he has no choice about it. So he applied for unemployment fraudulently because he's working under the table. Uh, if you're if you're to believe his texts um, and, and he says he made $100,000 a year, I don't believe anything he says. But if, if you were to believe his texts, he made, made $100,000 a year yet is, is taking unemployment. Since the unemployment, there's probably a lien or a garnishment. Well, they say it's garnished. So there's a garnishment on there. So th so those are the only payments he makes. Is is He he doesn't cut a check. He gets it deducted from what he receives. I mean, I think the problem here is, is that when I look at these texts, at these messages, he's claiming that they're not... <laughs> that she's making them up. I don't know why. Including the one about the broken arm. You're telling me she's made that one up too? Me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. You're I, telling I, me sir, these are made I, I, up. Sir, I've never even heard, I've never even got that message. I don't even okay. know about that message. Okay, sir. Let me ask you this. Are you telling this court, Mr. Brown has read you the messages, he's indicated that. Are you telling me that you never sent these? I'm telling you, I never sent those messages, sir. Right, here's what I'm going to do. Because, and Mr. Brown will tell you, the one thing that you don't want to do with me ever, ever, is lie to me. 
I'm, not I, I'm just saying. I'm just telling you that. <laughs> Thanks, Simon. I get the distinct feeling Judge Simpson doesn't believe this guy. The victim had emailed us, Your Honor, and indicated she also got a voicemail from the jail from the defendant um, that she wasn't able to send us. But just to make you aware, he had also called her. I think that was before making, the uh, making, no contact. Making, was there, was she intimating that there were threats of any type or anything said? She didn't say that. She said um, she sent us all these screenshots and she said, and if you'd like to listen to the voicemail from the jail, I can send you a link and you can put in the digits of my phone number and you can listen to it. Um, she said you can call me if you have any questions. So she did give us a phone number if you have questions for her. That sounds legit. I don't know if there's any lingering questions for you, Your Honor. I just thought I'd provide you all the information yeah, that I have. I got gotcha. you. Thank you. The night I was the night that I was booked in, Your Honor, I did the night that I was booked in, I did make a, a phone call and I did call her to let her know that I was waiting for my two stimulus checks, my second and my third to come in, that I would sign those over to her if we could okay. just work something out. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Are you telling me you just kind of said it that way? Because no. I can get the recording. No. So I just want to make sure what you're telling me. No. I don't understand. I, I, did you did you threaten her in any no, way? No, did you say no, no, not at all, sir. No, so you said it just you said what you said just as calmly as what you said to me just now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I did, I, I just told her I had my two stimulus checks. And then I just got a job, a thirty thousand job, in, thirty thousand dollar job in Celine to renovate an old Victorian house. Please do not leave me in here. Please let's work something out, sir. I just want to make things right. I'm not trying to dodge or duck. Uh, just, just give me a chance to make things right, and I will. My hand to God on my children on everything. I just got things going. I can do this. I can make everything right. I can't do it from in here. I'm just asking you to give me a shot to prove myself. I will not let the court down or my children down. Believe me, they told me about you when you said you will send people to come get you. They, the jailers here told me, Judge Simpson don't play. So I just give me a chance, sir. That's right. Judge, Judge Simpson, don't play. I think that's going to be my thumbnail for this. Let, let, let me know what you think. Uh, thank you all, dog. I saw your comment. It took me like a minute to catch up to it. The guy's name is Chance. Duh. Very, very cool. All of it was coming out of my, I'm a union carpenter. Okay. I did four years of school, got my journeyman's license. Just please let me prove myself. That's all I ask and give me a shot. Monitor me as close as you need to. I'll do whatever you need to. I just want to get on with my life and pay this down. That's all I want to do. I just need someone to hear me. Yeah, for child support, mm -hmm. pretty much. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. You want somebody to hear you. Thank you. They'll hear you at some point. And they'll listen to you. It'll be probably a little bit better than your kids had to listen when they had to be without at some point. That being neither here nor there. 
But um, what I will indicate is, however, court after viewing this, after hearing from the defendant, um, I'm reversing my decision. I don't see a reason at this point to depart from the 25% threshold and give the defendant the opportunity to that I was under the impression and that in a misimpression, quite frankly, of what he would do and what he could do. Because I will say this also, and I, I'm glad the Madam AG is here to clarify how those payments were made because those payments were not voluntary payments. And he made it sound this morning as though there were voluntary payments and it was basically all he could do at the moment. They weren't voluntary payments, they came out of checks. Here he goes interrupting me again. The bond amount will be reset at the $44,223 cash only payment. That payment will be made on case the to the front of the court on case number 201600167PM. That will be the defendant's bond. Is the previous PR bond that I had issued this morning and the mechanism for doing that is canceled. Um, that is interesting. Thank you, uh, Cerebral Tackle. That. Yeah, the recording when when the judge tells him I can get the recording, he 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 really backed down. Uh, that that was pretty funny. But right here, even with this, the judge is like sort of tough. Like he he doesn't he doesn't want to be lied to and all that stuff. But still, if you want to put this in context, he's not throwing in the book at him. He what he did is he is he tried to give him a break and deviate from the statutory norm, which is twenty five percent of the back. And uh, it sounds like he had done that that morning, but but when this came to his attention, he rescinded that, and then it's just back to the norm, the statutory. He isn't like doing something extra or bad to him. I mean, he he could hold him in contempt for this. That might be coming down the road. I doubt that hearing proceeds because the, they'll they'll have the goods on that. And and if that attorney has any sense, they'll say we don't want to go forward with this. You you're you know you're going to perjure yourself or get in more trouble. Just just take your you know. Take whatever the judge is going to do. We don't want a hearing on these texts. The no contact that I issued this morning remains, will remain in effect. That's interesting. And I will indicate since the defendant is disputing these and I'm making it based upon what is now before me, I set his uh, preliminary examination for January 13th, 2022 at 9 a.m. I will also at that time set a bond hearing if he wishes to have a bond hearing regarding the authenticity of these text messages as well as we can examine his phone call to her on the jail if necessary. Uh, Kathy, yeah, that, that is interesting. I have been meaning to, but I haven't gotten to Michael McDonald. Uh, I, I was considering doing that, but it's such a mess. The videos are so long, but uh, yeah, I, I might just do like a couple of long live streams about Michael McDonald. I know Natalie lawyer chick did, and I'm sure she did a good job of it, but, uh, I'll, t I'll take a look at that. Um, and thank you. I, I uh, also with uh, the, the interesting thing with Cedric, you, you can see with uh, Cedric Simpson here is, is uh, you know, he, like I said, he doesn't throw the book at him, but he does set this down for another bond hearing and hearing on the tax. And like I said, they should they should run away from that. <laughs> just 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 withdraw that that whole line of argument and, and be done. You don't want to proceed to hearing on that. Uh, um, when, it, when I got this video there, it, it, it's, it's interesting, this court, and I put a link to it. Um, they actually leave the comments open. And in fact, all the comments were about his collar. He's got, he's got this cool collar. I don't know what it is, but it you know doesn't fold down. It's just, it almost looks like a priest kind of a thing, which I actually think is sort of a smooth look with, uh, the, the judge robe, but, uh, that's, that's, that's where they, they left it. I mean, he, he just, he just he was going to give him a break and he took that back. He still hasn't done anything mean to him. It looks like it, but he hasn't. It's the court's decision at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor.
Here at Law Talk, we like to have fun with uh, silly stuff that happens in court, and every once in a while, and completely by accident, I assure you, you might learn something. Thanks for watching. All right, thanks everybody. I appreciate you coming out. That was a fun one.